How's it going, Dow? Good, you doing all right? Yeah, can't complain, man. Um, you said uh, at the beginning of preseason, you know, you, you got to see what this offense looks like before you can really start saying how it goes. Now that you're, I guess, two weeks away from the first game, is there one word or a term that you can use to describe what this offense is going to look like? Uh, what a question. One word. Um, I'm afraid, yeah, one word's hard. Yeah, you, know, you know, I'm happy with, with where we're at right now. Um, we're continuing to get better every day. Obviously, in the there's sometimes there are you you have to take a step back to grow sometimes. And there's been a lot of growth that's happened um, since May and through the summer and the player run practices. And we feel like we have a better feel of our roster and our depth charts and you know the uh, conceptually what our guys feel good with. And we're closer to being able to nail down some things that eat some of these you know guys that just got here in in august are good at which has been that's what camp is for is to create competition try to figure out your roster and the, the strengths and weaknesses of it and we're we're closer now than when we started uh, as far as the running back position a few weeks ago you're anxious to see what what you could get out of those guys the last few weeks so what, what have you kind of learned from from them over that course of time. Yeah, we're fortunate because we've had a couple of scrimmages now, and you uh, you really learn. You don't really know what you have until you put the ball down and um, and you make it live. So these scrimmages are extremely beneficial. You don't want to discount the whole month of work based on two or three performances, but it does it does mean a lot when you can set the ball down. Who's going to pick up a blitz when it's live? Who's going to break a tackle? Who's going to make the right cuts? And you know, obviously DK being a first time running back. First time in his career, uh, stepping in, be able to see him, you know, read read shades and read threes and get the ball to the right spot and playing with an offensive line and doing those things. Obviously, we know what type of uh, football instinct he has and, you know, been uh, pretty pleased with the other guys right now. It's a room that's going to continue to still compete for spots, but uh, we know what we have in there now. Yeah, we've heard different things, whether it be the phrase leash or just command, just letting Spencer be able to go out there and just have a little bit more control of the offense. For you as an offensive coordinator with your experience, is that something that you have you know, done throughout your coaching career? Or is it a combination of the player also earning that trust? I think it's a bit – I mean, it's all the player. You know, and, and if you ask this in the spring ball, I'm sure Clayton, the, the defensive staff and our defensive players will tell you, it feels like there's a lot more going on with him. Like he's a lot more involved that way. And it's because we wanted to introduce some concepts in the in spring ball and figure out what he likes. And you got to get reps. You can't as a, a young player. He does have advantages. He's played for three different in three different offensive systems. That is a <clears throat> that's advantageous to your learning football. It's not always advantageous to having success on the field, but your football mind has grown every time you play in a new system. Obviously, consistency helps more than anything to like pr produce on the field at a high level. Um, but all those experiences, so he was able to see what we what we do on paper and on the board, and then go out and execute a little bit. And then you kind of start to figure out, okay, hey, what about if you see this, get to that, or if you see that, get to this. And you got to figure out, yeah, in the classroom is one thing. Like I can get us in the right play in the classroom, but now all of a sudden bullets are flying, and it's live, and you got a pass rush, and they're disguising. Like, can you check plays there? And for right now, he's probably he's doing a lot. He's doing an awful lot of line of scrimmage, and it's because he's earned that right. And we fill his toolbox. And yeah, the more he hand, the more he can do, and the more he can handle, the more we'll give him. But the one line that we always talk about in the QB room with with that, to whom much is given, much is required. And so the more he studies, and the more there's also <clears throat> there's a guts thing that takes. Like it's one thing to say like, hey. I'm going to change the play. It's one thing to say it in a meeting room, but it's another thing to go do it. It takes guts to do that. Like you're in front of your team, you're in front of 10 other guys that are sitting in the huddle and like, whoa, whoa, whoa he's, he's changing the play to what? Like, why are we doing this? So for him to be able to do that, like we had to go, that was the ball security thing. It's the most annoying thing in the world. Can we not find a better place to put that thing? <laughs> Golly, like put it out in the locker room or something. I'm sorry, but uh, that is annoying, isn't it? Like, uh, um, I thought someone was trying to get in the door. Um, but uh, for him to be able to – and you got to have like, hey, you got to be able to give him enough leash to where it's like, hey, go do it. Go try it. Like, be, like have the courage to do it. Have the guts to do it. And then reel him back in sometimes like, hey, why would you do that? Because you don't want to leave the reservation. Like you don't want to become like where it's like 
you don't want it to be Denny's at 2 a.m. when you order something. You're like, I don't know what's coming out of the, caf- uh, out of the kitchen. But um, so when you give them that kind of freedom, like, you know, making sure that it's eats, you know, the advantageous looks. And I do think his experiences definitely help him that way because he's been a part of a lot of football. And he's seen a lot of different things, a lot of, you know, the most college players don't get, you know, um, don't get to play in three different systems. And I'm sure he would love to say, hey, I wish I was on one system but for the last three years, but it's going to help him long term. Dow Coach Beamer talked yesterday about the two offensive tackle positions kind of still being up for grabs. How would you yeah. kind of handicap that? And, and who are some guys that you've seen that have really kind of taken the reins at the tackle spots? When you say handicap, what Just who are some the position battle guys working there and how do you feel like this? Uh, I, yeah, I'm going to let Coach Beamer handle all the depth chart questions. Uh, there's still a competition going on there. Um, and there's several people involved in it. And I'm, I'm going to leave it at that and let him handle all the depth chart questions uh, that way. Uh, we had some wide receivers in here yesterday just talking about your scheme and how they feel like it lets them get down the field more. What would you say about your scheme works best for wide receivers specifically? I think that the receivers would probably be really happy that Spencer Rattler's a quarterback um, because his ability to push the ball down the field allows them to do stuff down the field more so than scheme. And we got some guys that can run. You know, and it's not – it's not a, like to me, I keep telling everyone this, even the, some of the offensive coaches, the offensive players – it's not what we want to do scheme-wise. It's what our guys do well. And now let's change presentations. Let's keep doing that. Let's get really good at it versus there's a lot of plays. I mean, I've spent 17 years in the NFL. I have 5,000 plays I, that I love, and they're all good. But it's now what fits our players. And we have – and some of that stuff is like you look at A.B. And A.B. – everyone sees A.B. And everyone, the first thing they say is, hey, A.B.'s short. He's a slot receiver. Well, A.B. reminds me of Taylor Gabriel, who's a long striding short guy who's really fast. So he doesn't run like a slot. He doesn't look like Danny Amendola or Kendall Wright. Like he's a long striding 23 mile an hour guy that can challenge the field vertically and horizontally. So I think it's a lot of it's a lot of like the players we have versus not what we what we want to do. Like I want to run the ball for eight yards of carry every time and never throw an incompletion. But like, it's really about finding stuff that fits your guys, and that's what fits our guys right now. Hey, Dal, we've talked with a lot of guys over the last few weeks about how excited they are to play in your offense, but also about how they don't want to give too much away about it when we ask yeah. what makes them excited. What do you find the balance to be between, you know, talking about the offense, being excited to display um, everything this season, and also not giving away state secrets? Yeah, well, I think that it, it's – what we don't want them to say is like, hey, I'm worried. Like this, it doesn't look good and it hadn't been good and it's been choppy. And um, I'm very fortunate to be here. I'm very fortunate to be in the position I am with. And it is that way because the head coach and the coaching staff and the players that we have. And so when you have players like that and you have a building like we have, every day when you walk in, you're excited. And I'm excited every day. The best time of my day is from 8 to 12 when we get on the field with our players in the meeting rooms. And uh, we guys, we have a bunch of good kids that are hungry. And that's what makes us – like, I think that's what creates the positive comments. It's not what we do offensively. It's the connection that we, we have and the real, really hard, honest conversations that we have with each other. Like, there's a bunch – everyone in America runs four vertical. We, we run four vertical. Like, everyone does. Um, but it's a connection that we have. And I think that just the way that we approach things with – the positive attitude, and we coach hard. Like, if you guys are on the field, like, I coach really hard, and I'm probably a little different in the meeting room than I am on the field because I can get super intense on the field because I want everything to be perfect. But when you get to the point where you have had these real relationships with people, then we can coach you really hard because you know where we're coming from. And I think that probably creates as much excitement as more so than a play or a scheme. And obviously success creates that, and I think that we've got some guys out there that, are, that can see themselves getting better. And I think that's more of the – I think that's more the excitement so than like what we put on paper as a playbook. Yeah, uh, with Spencer, we've heard a lot about just Spencer's confidence being yeah. up a lot from last year. Just on the field, what does that look like for you? And how, from a coaching perspective, do you kind of manage that getting too high versus too low? Yeah, it's um, it is fun because you I've seen both sides. I've seen guys that have lost confidence and um, go in shells. Normally, that happens when you're not having success and. It's a hard position. It's a heavy burden to wear that crown um, because everyone, every decision you make is judged, not just by y'all and the fans, but your teammates. And you got to go sit in a, in a meeting room and you throw an interception in practice and, like, 
you, your whole day you're anxious about let, let's just get past play seven and team when I threw an interception. Um, and for Spence right now, he feel I think he feels really good about not only his ability but his command and being able to do the things and and work the way he wants to work. And that was part of like when you guys heard me when I first got here. This is a partnership. It's not just like hey, like this really talented player is going to do what we tell him to do. This is a really talented player that we want to have command and that we want to have ownership and we want him to be the absolute undoubted leader of the offense, which he has become. It wasn't that way when I got here. Um, but he's earned the respect of everyone. I think that's why people are saying what they do about him is not because you guys know the talent. Like, you see it every day. You, know, you see it's on tape last year. But it's him feeling really comfortable with what we're doing and him getting to the point where he's like, hey, I don't see that play well. Fine, it's out. Like, and I test him sometimes. I, I got Lenore's on it the other day. Like, him and Lenore's had the same comment about a play. They're like, hey, I don't like this play. So we went out in a, in a right before the scrimmage, and I told the guys, uh, four or five guys, signal, and I said, hey, signal in this play. And, like, Spencer looks back and looks at because Lenore's is taking the rep, and he looks at me and just shakes his head. And Lenore's like, okay, I'm going to go run the play. And Spencer yells, hey, yo, if you don't like the play, tell him no. Go to the next play. I don't want that one. And you try to create that where they feel comfortable having those interactions. It's not, like, it's not a dictatorship. It's a partnership, and I think that's where Spence feels really good about the things that he knows that are getting called and getting run. And I think that he feels good about his toolbox and ability to, if he sees something, to change it or fix something, whether it be a protection, a concept, a run game play. Like, we put an awful lot um, on his plate as much as any quarterback I've ever coached in, the, in that 17 years in the NFL. Like, he's got a lot of responsibility with the line of scrimmage that way. So, I guess sort of along those lines, What's the process, timeline? Like, what does it look like when, when you're trying to figure out what that very first play call is going to be next Saturday? Who says we haven't picked it? <laughs> uh, we're, we'll get to that. Um, we'll know. Uh, I mean, there's been – it happens a lot of different ways. Um, Spencer, the staff, Coach Beamer, everyone will be involved in it. Um, the first one and, and you know the good thing is it won't be the first time I've ever done it and it won't be the first time that Spencer's ever run for, uh, for a first play so we've got plenty of time and the, the process is like you go through the week and you say hey what looks good like what do we feel comfortable with what's do we do you run the ball to hey let the offensive line just tee off and get all the the nerves out of do you let Spencer get an easy completion um, just so hey he, he settles down gets a completion you know, that they're going to be amped up. It's going to be a huge crowd. You throw a screen. Like, there's so many different things that happen, like, go into this discussion of a first play. Um, but, like, right now, the only thing, to be completely honest, I'm I'm worried about is getting in with the office of staff after this meeting, correcting the practice tape today, and, um, you know, getting ready for tomorrow's practice, not the first play in North Carolina. Oh, just a quick housekeeping. But are you going to be in the press box or on the field this year? Um, if right now it looks like I'll be in the press box. Okay. And a lot of players have kind of talked about Omega Blake stepping in and having some yeah. and flashing a little bit with juice out. How have you seen him develop and what's maybe next for his game as he continues to get his feet under him? It's it's consistency. It's it has nothing to do with talent. He's got uh, he's got a lot of twitch in his body. He's a guy that can run off the ball and the term we use a lot in the wide receiver room is raging off the ball and he'll put his head down, and he can run, he can run by people and he can put fear the fear in people to back off and run a comeback or you're going to press him. He can run by people on go routes. Um, and for us, like, he's a guy that just, if you're looking, there's always, look, with every bad situation or anything that's untimed or not wanted, there's always something that good comes out of everything. Um, that's how God intended it for life to be. It's like with everything that bad that happens or, you know, not advantageous, something else w will happen um, good. And for him, it's been getting a bunch of reps that he might not have gotten in a different role. And so for him, we get we have a better evaluation of him. He's got more confidence because he's been in the, in the huddle with Spencer more than he's ever been. And so for him to have that success and have that opportunity, like he's a guy that the quarterbacks believe in. He's a guy that the rest of the team believes in, and he's made a, a tremendous uh, jump uh, the last six, seven days, whatever it was. Dale, Shane talked about it the other day about when it comes to younger players, you know, trying to make sure from a fan standpoint and probably for the players too, those expectations just, you know, simmer yeah. down a little bit. Yeah. How do you help some of those younger players continue to build that confidence up? I mean, you've been coaching college for a while. I'm sure pros is the same where young guys come in. Yeah. They're not playing right away. That's the first time maybe they've ever gone through that. How do you help them continue to, you know, get them to, to come along? 
the interesting thing about college is different than the NFL is they're so young. And there is like an education process that goes through. In the NFL, we went through it uh, with Trubisky in Chicago. Like he's the second pick in the draft, and he gets in there, and like the what the, he has to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders, and he's the quarterback. So in a major media market, where you know everyone's looking at him after every decision, I, I just watch him go through the the growth process there. But it's educating these these young guys that um, it is a process, and you, if you don't talk to him about it. Where there's a void in um, communication, it will be filled with negativity, and you got to figure out where they're at. And we've got some high. The good thing is we've got some high-profile recruits um, in this building that are young and that are expected to help this roster. Um, we get ads. It's funny to me because in college football, like every time you run into someone that figures out who you are and what your job title is, like they ask about the same young people all the time, and it's always Spence, and then it's guys like Pup, and it's Nick Harbor, and um, DJ Braswell and all these young players that are like highly recruited, highly touted kids. But it's like, hey, they're also an 18 year old kid that's trying to go to school and try to figure it out and live living alone for the first time in their lives. And they don't know what it looks like to be a backup. Um, they don't know what it looks like to compete for a starting spot. They, for the last three years of their life, they've been the best player at their school, maybe in their county, maybe in their state. Um, so it's, there's an education process that goes through with, the, with these guys of like tempering expectations, staying off Twitter. Um, staying off, like, don't listen to the outside world because it's noise. And most of these people don't know what happens inside this building. They don't know where they're at in the depth chart. They don't know where they have to grow. They don't know their strengths, their weaknesses. And most young people don't know their own strengths and weaknesses. I know I didn't at 18 years old. Um, now, I have a lot more weaknesses than guys like Nick Harbour and Pup Howard and those guys. But, uh, like, it's there's a, there is a growth process. There's an education process that may be one of our better things we do with, with Coach Beamer and Demo and the support staff that he's given these young players to be able to deal with challenges, adversity. You also have to – there's also prosperity you have to deal with. It's not just adversity. It's prosperity of giving, getting too much too early. And I think Spence went through that process. I think that's why he's a stronger person than he is now at 14 years old. He's a five-star recruit coming out of Arizona, commits to Oklahoma, and um, you deal with all this prosperity of great things happening. Five, I think he was, like, he was undefeated, I think, when he uh, – when they made the switch uh, with uh, the other kid that's at USC now, but like to go through prosperity and adversity, it it you know you get forged in the fire that way. And some of these, so for us, it's making sure we have the support system for these young players that they can handle adversity and prosperity. And that we're also communicating and talking to them a lot about about those situations because they're going to come up. And it's it's harder than ever with young people because there's so many outside influences. They they've got their phone in their hand all the time. And it's just you know what the word coach saving rat poison good and bad like the outside noise like what and everyone lives to the, uh, they think that they have to live up to the fans and their parents and families like their expectations instead of just you know being in the moment doing like improving every day so it's a lot though you've been really complimentary about luke Doty and when he can yeah. bring to this team where have you seen maybe his growth this camp and do you kind of maybe envision a role or a package for a guy like that yeah absolutely um he's one of my favorite players on this team he's one of my favorite players i've ever coached because of what he values and the teammate he is and um you know i say this other day we do our freshman skit and i tell everyone like that asks that asks the right questions like hey you talk about leadership and you talk about guys that have it whatever it is like have it we're doing our freshman skit the other day and this is the freshman or all newcomers hey you got to come up and do something tell a joke sing a song dance whatever it is and um before it starts like luke Doty, someone who stands up and goes hey guys don't throw don't throw uh you know the they wad up newspaper uh, napkins or whatever like don't start all that stuff like let them finish the act and boo them like don't start booing right off the start but it's like Luke Doty's only spoke up and told everyone to act right like hey guys act right treat these guys the right way and he that's who Luke is to me that's why I have such respect for Luke um, he's a valuable football player that can help us in uh, other rooms and just quarterback uh, you know so he's and he's done that in the past I think in the bowl game he played on special teams he's played on pump pressure and kickoff returns and done some other things that way. And, you know, it would be foolish for us to have a player like that that uh, myself and Coach Beamer believe in um, standing next to us on the sideline. So, like, yeah, is he a guy that could have a role in different, different areas? Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you.